If you're a filmmaker like me, then you probably spend way too much time color grading all of your footage. So in this quick video, I'm actually going to show you one of my favorite features that I found in DaVinci Resolve. It's kind of a hidden feature, actually. I didn't know that it existed until just recently. So let's dive in. It's one of my favorite things. So I'm going to switch over to my main screen here. And here I have, uh, I've created a timeline uh, with a couple of clips from a wedding that I just shot a couple weeks ago. And I have a before and after. So um, here is the raw clip. Now I did shoot these in S-Log, uh, but I have a uh, I have DaVinci Resolve automatically convert my S-Log to Rec 709. Uh, if you're interested in learning how to do that, uh, drop a comment below and let me know if you want me to show you how to do that because um, that has saved me a lot of time too. But that's a video for another day. So I'm gonna show you how to be able to go from this to this on a color grade. And it's super easy, super simple. One node in the node tree, there's no complicated, um, you know, skin tone mapping and, and different things like that. You can achieve an incredible look um, just like this uh, without doing hardly any work. So let's dive right in. So I'm gonna go to shift six is a quick key to go to my color tab. And here is the raw clip. And I have it set to loop, so it should loop just this one clip. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down and let me uh, scoot this up here for just a second. Um, I'm going to come down and I'm going to click on these three dots right here. And if it isn't already checked, then I want you to check editable splines right there. And what that's going to do is when you're in the color tab, go to custom curves uh, right here. And that's gonna make it so when you click on one of the dots in your curve, it's gonna give you a spline to edit. Now, you've probably heard a million times over that you need to uh, put an S curve on your footage. And that is true. And um, you could have done it before um, in DaVinci Resolve by creating your own, you know, putting your own dots in there and kind of mapping it out yourself. But it never, at least for, in my experience, it never quite worked out right. Never looked as good as it does when I do it this way. So what I'm gonna do is make sure that I have them all, um, they're, they're all connected. So lock your, uh, your uh, luminance and then RGB values, excuse me, lock, lock them all in so that it edits them all at the same time. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add a very, very basic and simple S curve. So I'm gonna grab this, I'm gonna drag it up just a little bit like that. And then I'm going to grab the bottom one, so click on it, and then I'm going to grab the spline here. And I'm going to drag it down. And I'm going to keep going until I get the look that I like. Of course, I'm watching my scopes, making sure that I don't get too close to zero. And I'm going to drop that down just like that. Now, that already looks immediately better. So if I do a before and after, you can see that that, that S-curve looks really good. But I'm going to do just a little bit more to it. I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my color warper. And this is one of my new favorite features in DaVinci Resolve 17. It was just announced last year. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my yellow spline. I'm going to move it slightly over to the orange, just slightly. Remember, subtle adjustments. And then I'm going to hold control and also select the red. So I have the yellow and the red splines selected. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the luminance. And you'll see what that does is that brings out the skin tones. Uh, so that makes the skin just pop just a little bit more. So you check this out, my before and after. Now, I didn't have to do any skin mapping. I didn't have to do any power windows. I didn't have to do, you know, color selections. I didn't have to do masks. I didn't have to do tracking. None of that. And I was able to get the look that I wanted with this film. Remember, specifically with wedding um, videography. If you're doing something more stylized, like a short film or something like that, maybe you'll want to put some more stylization into it. But as far as just a basic color uh, color grade to just make it look, to make it pop, you know, give it that, that vibrancy, this, in my opinion, is the best way to do it. It's a super simple two-step process, and you can do it on just one node. And if you want to get a little fancy, you could add another corrector kind of as a bonus. You can add a corrector here, only select the red and then take out some of the red in the shadows and then bring it back up like this. And what that'll do is that'll add a little bit of teal into the shadows and that'll make the skin pop just a little bit more, add color contrast. 
Um, but that's, you know, I, I don't, I don't always do that. I only do that sometimes. So that's the key. So what you want is simplicity is the key is what I'm trying to say. Um, so just to recap, um, come over into your color tab, come to these three dots and make sure editable splines is enabled. And I'm not sure why, maybe I'll look for in the settings and do a follow up video, but I haven't found a way to actually make it so that that's enabled by default whenever you open resolve. So whenever you go to color grade, just make sure you quickly check that. Um, but then once you do, you can just create these S curves and it's so simple, but so fast. And it saves me hours of color grading and editing. I'm not having to fiddle around with all of these as useful as these tools are. And I still use them occasionally. I don't have to fiddle around with all of these tools nearly as much as I did before. And then all I have to do, so let's say, um, so if I, if I, uh, grab these and let's say I get rid of the grade on these two because they were filmed um, basically right at one right after the other. All I have to do is right click to grab still. And now I have basically it's a LUT over here in the corner. And then on these two, I can hold shift, select these two. And you could do this with a whole series of clips to save you a bunch of time. Once you've graded one and you have a bunch of clips that are going to match that shot before that are shot in the same lighting scenario, same white balance, all of that, then you can just mass apply the the uh the correction or the grade that you made to your next clips and when i do that i just come over here and i do append node graph and this is important the reason i don't do apply grade is because that takes the video settings as well and adds it to these clips and i want to just uh append them so anything um anything that isn't common between the clips is going to be appended to it and click on that and it'll add a node and then it'll grade both of these just like it was before. You can see here that looks very, very good. Um, and it's super easy and super fast. So that's, that's, that's pretty much it. Um, if you, let me switch back to this. If you really enjoyed this video, uh, make sure to give it a like and give me, uh, maybe comment below again. Like I said, if you want to see a follow-up with how I actually import my footage and have DaVinci Resolve automatically convert my S log, my Sony S log three into rec 709, leave a comment below and say, yes, I'd love to, you know, I'd love a follow-up video on that and drop a like as well. So until then, thank you for watching and I will see you next time.